Welcome to the Inner Market Analysis Update. This is being prepared August 15th, where we'll compare different areas of the market to see how things are interacting with each other. For the most part, not much has changed, but we are seeing a gradual shift from the areas that were positive. Some of those are still positive, but they're starting to show some weakness. Some areas that have been showing weakness are continuing to look a little bit more positive. So let's go back and talk about how things look as of August 15th. First of all, the valuation. This is a long-term chart, the monthly chart. This just shows how the S&P is, that's the black line on top, compared to historical price earnings ratios. And typically what the market accepts is when we're at 20 or above, the market is considered expensive. At 15, we're fairly priced. And when we're at 10, we are considered undervalued or cheap. Well, for a long time, many years, the market was overvalued. As we saw the declines in 2022, the value came down. It actually crossed below 20. Now we're starting to go back up. The chart down below just shows the spread between the S&P price and the value of the red line that measures the PE of 20. Now, one thing to be aware of is this is looking backwards. This is called the trailing 12-month PE. These are earnings reports that have already been filed, and they're publicly available for analysts and investors to study. The stock market doesn't use this. They look forward at PE ratios going into the future, and they tend to be a little bit more liberal. And on that basis, we're more fairly valued right now to slightly overvalued because the S&P has been going up. But this is a good way just to see how did the market react over a period of time. Sometimes we're under the extreme reading of 20. Sometimes we even drop down, getting close to the inexpensive level. This is what value investors like to use to make their determinations on things. The next chart is just another historical chart going back to 1980, just to show different events that have happened and what the PE ratio looking back was at that time. So this can be just a hel helpful reference point. All right, we do have some scenarios. Now, I usually don't bring these up in the intermarket analysis videos. Well, I have lately because I think these are kind of important and not everybody watches all of the videos that I post. So I want to expose this to everybody. This first chart is the S&P 500 and it measures the stocks in the S&P that are above their 50 period moving average. Back in June, we had it dip down to an extreme negative reading. Now it's gone all the way up to give us a slight extreme positive reading. Now, in the short term, this could be suggesting that we've climbed a little too far too fast. But at the same time, it can also show that we've had a nice thrust of upward movement buying, and that has really helped things to improve. So this just shows that the S&P is starting to look healthy. We compare that to the mid cap index, which also has been doing much better. It is not giving us an extreme reading right now, but it is showing some improvement. The same thing can be said for the small caps. They're also improving after giving an extreme negative reading. So we compare these three together. And in the past week, we saw the small caps doing better. We saw the mid caps doing better. Now, can that kick in gear and start to help the large caps do better as well? This is another chart. The chart shows us those stocks in the S&P 500 uh, that are above their 200-day simple moving average. It also gave us an extreme negative reading, but has been bouncing up right now. So this is also showing some improvement by looking a little deeper into the market. This is looking at a 10-day average of the S&P 500 highs minus the lows. It also gave an extreme negative reading and has since been showing some improvement. This looks at a really broad area. The American Stock Exchange, the NASDAQ, and the NYSE also gave us an extreme negative reading when we're taking out a five-period moving average of the highs minus the lows, and it's coming back up and showing a lot of improvement. This is the equity put call ratio measured over a five-period simple moving average. We spiked up. That's when fear was really high. That's about the time we hit the low back in June and has been declining ever since. 
So what we're seeing in this chart, not only in the S&P and in all these charts that we look at, but we're seeing across a number of different indexes, a lot of improvement. Things are starting to look more positive. Doesn't mean we're going to go straight up from here, but based on where things were a month ago, back in June and into early July, things are looking much, much better right now as we enter into the second half of 2022. This is another area that we're watching. This is sector rotation, where at the end of 2021, you had a lot of the smart money getting out of growth areas and getting into value areas. And after that, we saw the S&P really struggle for the first half of the year. As we got to the end of the first half, we saw a what's called a positive divergence, where the S&P was making a lower low, but the Qs on a relative basis to the S&P, they we're making a higher low, the same thing with discretionary, the same thing with growth versus value. This continues to hold up pretty well, not necessarily as strong because we had a pretty good week last week, but it's still positive overall with a moving average that continues to advance. Here's another chart looking at the large, mid and small caps, comparing the growth areas with the value areas. They also continue to advance, even though the mid caps were down slightly and the small caps were down slightly, we're still seeing follow through with the large caps. Now, even if we drop below this moving average, that doesn't necessarily mean everything's over, but we just want to keep an eye on this. If it really starts to turn down and the moving average turns down, then we might take more notice. Looking at the staples, they were really strong in 2020 and 2021. They saw some weakness. We actually had a death cross here, but now prices have been coming back up and are showing some improvement. This is, to me, the most powerful setup that we're looking at, where we take a ratio of the staples to the S&P 500. That gives us a value. And when this value is declining, a lot of times when we spike and then go down, that signals a really significant bottom in the S&P 500. And this continues to fall. We have three spikes here that are just about at the same level. We got faked out a couple of times before, but this one looks like it's getting some, well, you can't really say legs because it's going down, but it's, it's picking up momentum to the downside. So we'll want to keep an eye on this to see if it turns around or if it continues to fall. Let's look at growth versus value. Growth is still negative overall. This red line is the 200-day moving average. The blue line is the 50 we are seeing some improvement, but still an overall downtrend. And then here's the peer value index, which it had suffered a lot of problems, but it's actually showing a little bit more strength. This is another thing to be aware of. Growth, we would like to see this really start to break out and turn positive. That helps the S&P go higher. With peer value going up, that's more of a defensive play. That means that there might be some problems going into the future so we again we just want to keep an eye on this here is a measurement of the growth versus value where growth had underperformed but is showing improvement value had been outperforming but is showing some recent weakness here's another look at growth versus value where the growth had really been declining it has since been re rebounding a bit we're getting back up to the 200 day moving average but it's still in an overall downtrend. This is an inverse of that same chart where value had been showing some strength, but is now showing recent weakness and coming down to its 200 day moving average. This is another look at growth versus value, also showing weakness and a rebound. And this is value showing strength and some weakness. So we're seeing a lot of confirmation looking at different indexes, ETFs and comparisons that we make. This is another look at the growth index against the value index where growth had been underperforming, has been recouping, but is still in an, an overall downtrend and it's underperforming, but showing improvement. Here's a look at the 30 biggest software companies where they had been really struggling in 2022. We may have set some kind of a base and we're showing an improvement, but it's still in an overall downtrend. This is a monthly chart comparing inflation areas with deflation areas. When this goes down, that means inflation is starting to subside. 
CRB index, also another area we look at for inflation, still in an overall uptrend, but the CRB has really been showing some weakness lately. It came all the way down almost to its 200-day moving average and has since been bouncing back up. This is corn, where it spiked up, coming down and showing a bit of a rebound. Aluminum came down from a spike, starting to go back up slightly. Heating oil has still been very, very high, even though it's not as high as it was when it spiked earlier. Gas, this is probably the one we feel the most. It really spiked up. It's been coming down, but showing a slight bounce. Recently, natural gas has always been high. It's been bouncing all over the place, but this one really didn't see much of a decline. It, it did, but not for very long. It's pretty much come right back up to its other price. Oil has been below 95 we're now right at 9209 which should also help gas prices wheat spiking up coming down showing a bit of a bounce lumber in a downtrend but now has been showing some improvements overall so these inflation areas are, are showing some improvement right now so we want to just keep an eye on this the dollar which is still in a pretty strong uptrend has shown recent weakness and a lot of days, what we're seeing is when the S&P is up, the dollar is down and vice versa. Although the last couple of days, they've tended to go more in the same direction. Here's the euro, which has been showing some weakness, but now it's bouncing compared to the dollar, which has been showing a lot of strength and then some recent weakness here. This is looking at the Japanese yen, which is having a lot of trouble. The euro, which is still in an overall downtrend, and the dollar, which has been in an uptrend. Copper, another barometer of the economy, where it was really falling, well, since these economic reports have been coming out, suggesting that maybe inflation is starting to top out and go back down, we're seeing copper begin to rebound, but it's still in a negative trend. This is the copper to gold ratio, where copper has been underperforming, but has been showing a bit of a bounce when related to gold, but gold had a couple of pretty good days last week. This is that same chart showing the spread between the gold copper ratio and the two year yield, where these are really far apart. They tend to not get all that far apart and they tend to move in the same general direction at times. So they're not doing that right now. So we just wanna keep an eye on this one too. Gold, after really going down, has been showing a bit of a comeback lately, but it's still in an overall downtrend after having a death cross. The same thing with silver. It had a death cross, has been really weaker, but lately has been rebounding. Some of our indexes, the CRB index, that's inflation against the S&P. The CRB index had been really outperforming, but has been coming back down as of late. This is an inverse of that, showing how the S&P had been outperforming, went sideways. For 2022, it's been underperforming, but has been staging a bit of a bounce. Here's the NASDAQ 100, which is growth compared to the S&P 500, where when this is going up, that means the growth stocks are going up more than you see the stocks in the S&P. Now, the NASDAQ is pretty much all growth, where the S&P is growth and value together. Some other stocks. Here's the mega cap growth. These are the really, really big companies, really struggling in 2022, but showing a continued bounce. The S&P 100, the biggest stocks in the S&P 500 against the rest of the S&P, has been showing some improvement, but not really, really strong lately. Here's small caps. They're kind of breaking out just a little bit when compared to the S&P 500. This could signal that the market is willing to, <clears throat> to take on more risk because these are small caps. They're not necessarily as established, and they're definitely not as big of companies it might be a company that's been around for a long time. They just aren't very big. But when people are willing to get into these stocks, that means they're willing to take on what's considered to be more risk. And that could benefit the S&P 500. This is a ratio. This red chart here is the small caps versus the S&P. When this starts to spike up, that can give some support to the blue chart here, which is the S&P 500. That's looking more positive. Low volatility stocks, after really declining, have been starting to come back up. You would expect, if things were really starting to get more positive, that we would see this continue to decline. 
since it's the low volatility stocks that folks get into when the market starts running into trouble. Here's the comparison between the low volatility stocks and the SPY, where the low volatility stocks had really been underperforming, but in 2022, they've been outperforming, but showing some recent weakness. Here's the Dow Jones composite, taking the Dow, the transports, and the utilities together. They're actually breaking above their 200-day moving average, and that could be considered positive. Here's Dow theory. Here's Dow at the top, the transports and utilities, not really seeing much of a divergence, either positive or negative. So they're tending to confirm each other currently. There's a longer term chart where we look for either positive or negative divergences. And you can see I marked this a number of years back where the Dow was starting to go higher, but we saw a negative divergence with the transports. But that ended up not really meaning anything because look at what happened after that. So we have to take this a little bit with a grain of salt. Fang stocks have really struggled in 2022, but have been showing some improvement but they're still in an overall downtrend. ARC also really struggled, but has been bouncing. Looking at bonds against stocks, these are this is the total bond ETF, where we came down, we set a low, and this is bonds based on price. And they have been advancing as of late, but they're still in a downtrend. The Pring World Bond Index went back, we tested the COVID lows. We've been bouncing up off of that, but still in an overall uptrend. I'm sorry, downtrend. The monthly chart of the stock to bond ratio shows that stocks are back to the point where they're outperforming bonds. And here's bonds compared to stocks. It shows we tried to break out with bonds, but since have shown some weakness. And so bonds have continued to underperform stocks. This is a new chart. This is just a stock to bond correlation. The scenario that I've been saying in my daily videos is, for a more healthy environment, it would be good for stocks and bonds to both go up together. Because if bonds are going up, that means interest rates are coming down. And if stocks are going up, that's helping the health of the S&P 500 and the stock market as a whole. When we're above this 0.25, that means they're going in the same general direction, even though it's been weakening lately. When we get below minus 0.25, that means they have an inverse relationship. They're going in opposite directions. And right now, stocks and bonds are tending to go in the same direction, but it's not as strong of a relationship as it had been. Here's the Dow Jones Corporate Bond Index. Also really difficult 2022, but showing some recent strength, but still in an overall downtrend. Here's the S&P against the 10-year. The yield, this shows how the S&P has really been underperforming, but lately has been outperforming the rise in interest rates, but still in an overall downtrend. Junk bonds, which tend to follow the stock market, they look like they might have put in some kind of a bottom here and are showing a bounce, but we're still in an overall downtrend. Here's a ratio between junk bonds and treasury bonds, where it shows how junk bonds have been showing a lot of improvement lately. Here's the yields. This is a daily chart just showing how yields are just dancing around all over the place right now and then here's a weekly chart showing the us rates at the top that's the 10 year and then the uk germany and then japan continues to have interest rates rather flat so these tend to move more or less in correlation with each other but we're starting to see interest rates coming down overall looking at some sectors here's the energy sector which has been the sector to be in in 2022, but lately it's been showing some weakness, but it's still in an uptrend. The tech sector showing weakness coming right up to the 200 day moving average. If we can break through that, that could be quite positive. Semiconductors also showing a lot of weakness for 2022, but recent strength. They've been able to get above their 50 period moving average, but they're not above the 200 yet. The tech sector against the S&P starting to show some strength here, but we're coming back down to the 200 day moving average. Some other areas to look at. Here's growth against bonds, which both have suffered a lot in 2022. It's showing that growth is starting to outperform bonds. And we could see a golden cross here soon if this continues, but we might have some resistance above where we're at right now. The 10 year yield, 
which had been really outperforming the tech sector, lately has been falling back, but is still in an overall uptrend. And then the inverse of that is the tech sector, which had been underperforming, but showing recent strength, but still in an overall downtrend. Discretionary, these are the things that make life interesting. They really struggled in 2022 so far, but they're starting to make a bit of a comeback, although they're still in a downtrend. And this is the inverse, the staples, which had been holding up a lot better, have recently been showing some weakness, but continue to be in an uptrend. Energy against tech. Energy had been really outperforming, but lately we're seeing tech come in and start to take over, even though energy is still in an uptrend. But we're seeing this moving average really rolling over right now. Gold to the S&P really was outperforming for quite a while, but lately as stocks are starting to show some improvement and gold is not really going as fast with its improvement, it's coming down and has actually dropped below the 200-day moving average. If this continues, we might see a death cross here. Gold to the dollar, where the dollar has been having some struggles lately as stocks have been going up, but the dollar has still been outperforming gold. Or you could say it another way, gold has been underperforming the dollar. High leverage loans, these continue to go up overall, but they're still in an overall downtrend. This, these are riskier loans. And if people are feeling better about things, that's when they're willing to take on more risk. Here's our intermarket analysis chart. Oil is still the strongest commodity that's up. The dollar is second place where you have gold, stocks, and bonds all in negative going back to the beginning of 2022. Small cap index. This is rather encouraging. It's been able to recapture its 200-day moving average, and we're right at R1 currently. Is this going to act as resistance and we fall back, or are we going to be able to break through and continue higher? Mid caps also, the same basic idea where we're slightly above the 200-day moving average and we're right at R1. This is fairly significant resistance. It's more positive that we closed above this, but can this hold? The Dow, <clears throat> it has not been able to get back to its 200-day moving average, and it's right at R1. This could act as resistance also. The NASDAQ broke above R1, needs to get up to R2, and still has a ways to go to get back to its 200-day moving average. NASDAQ 100, kind of the same thing, above R1, and you have R2 and the 200-day moving average currently right on top of each other as a resistance level. The Wilshire, broader look. This is rather encouraging because we broke above R1, but we still have the 200-day moving average above where prices are right now. All stocks still in an overall downtrend, but are showing some improvement. Emerging markets, they're still not doing all that great. They're still working on building some kind of a base here. And we're still in an overall trend, even though we're seeing some improvement in this chart. Internationally, China continues to be down, where we have emerging markets, Europe, Japan, and the U.S. are showing more positive trends currently. Some correlations, the S&P to the dollar, they're kind of going slightly in opposite directions of each other. This relationship was stronger. The lower this goes, that means the more they're likely they're to go in opposite directions. Looking at oil against the S&P, they're pretty much neutral. Between plus 0.25 and minus 0.25, I consider that neutral. It's when we break out either up or down when I think these charts help us more. We are seeing the S&P and the yields kind of going in somewhat the same direction. And the tech sector to the 10-year yield also kind of going in the same general direction. Here's the two-year yield also going in the same general direction as the S&P. So what are our positive areas? I, I didn't make any changes from the last video. Things are improving, but energy, the CRB and interest rates are still in overall uptrends. And then our negative list is still long, even though we're showing a lot of improvement. Last week, I added gold to this because we had the recent death cross. So thank you. I hope this is helpful to you. Please feel free to check out the daily videos and the weekly video to get kind of all of the picture together. And I will prepare this video again after next week.